want to start with sharing a few numbers that have bothered me over time. Something I've wanted to fi find value in for a while now. In a country that is known for its culture and diversity, India is home to more than 7 million craftspeople. These 7 million are the 40% of the world's artisans. And yet we contribute to less than 2% of the global handicraft market of $400 billion. Each year now, we stand to lose 10% of these artisans, more than 200 of these crafts endangered. And I've often wondered to myself, that if influential organizations, governments, big budgets, and years of schemes hasn't been able to push the sector in, in a way that it yields its true potential, what can? Productive collaboration of some kind, perhaps. That's been the buzzword. But how? Another reason why I want to explore it is because there is, there is a need there is a requirement to rediscover the immersive value in the traditional spaces of India. And being on field made me realize very quickly that a single skill set wasn't going to add much value to this sector. So I had a hunch. I had a hunch and I was overcome by all these fears and I'm sure we all are, I'm not crazy. The fear of being incompetent, the fear of insignificance. And that fear cripples us. Raise your hands if you've ever had an idea or something in a system you'd like to change. Something you've said, huh, this, if done this way, would have been better. I'm sure more of us have them. And we get some half hands because we're unsure of them. There is doubt and there is this fear. And a lot of these ideas fizzle out. It has a lot to do with doing it by ourselves. You see, together the unknown seems a little less risky and a little more approachable. These are the Beehive Design Collective that I've grown to admire and follow over time. They have these epic illustrations that they use as organizational tools, put a copy, uh, copy anti-copyright on it, and it's a collaborative effort between artists, activists, media makers, educators, this particular one is the Meso-American Resist uh, Meso Resistance, which was resistance to giant infrastructural projects. And why I'm talking about it is because as an artist, I see that a hundred of artists came together with different styles to make it look like one piece. And that says a lot about their collaborative design process. We know how employers every day want their employees to think like one organization. And employers in different departments are reluctant to do so. We know it's not a cakewalk. There are power struggles, there's clashing of individual goals, rivalries, different work ethics in place. And hence the premise of what I'm going to talk about today. Using collaboration as a productive, effective tool and not imposing it as a rule. It's extremely essential to assess the conditions of success before we establish and go in for a collaborative relationship. Now, collaboration comes in extremely handy in the especially two spaces, where we have complicated problems and where we have complex problems. Pumping crude oil from six miles below the surface of Gulf of Mexico is complicated. So is building an electric car. Ask Elon Musk and his team. But once you've figured it out, it's easy to repeat it at will. Comparatively. Complex problems, however, they require you to step back and rethink strategies, work on possibly shared strengths. It's based on relationships. Because for far too long now, we've focused on quick solutions and short term gains. And that might work sometimes when we're content to count instead of measure. But in complex problems like poverty, hunger, human trafficking, it requires us to probe, sense, and then respond. Because you may, may be figure it out once, but you may not get the same result the next time. Lev Vygotsky's social, experiment, uh, social uh, development theory, sorry, 
stresses that human learning is a social process. We are the stories we tell. And the whys and hows of our stories are interwoven with those of the people we interact with. And so here I have a little structure that you adapt and reiterate to work towards making collaborative action more effective. And I call it SALT. It starts with the attitude. A collaborative atmosphere has a lot of people engaging with it. But people need a framework to work within, some kind of structure, a little flexible. Basically a playbook that has broad principles to guide your efforts, but not a rule book that hems people in. Unlike teamwork, collaboration works on competing goals along with shared goals. This is where experts come together, try to identify problems, brainstorm on it, and try to design systems around it. It's like a film set, for example, where actors, singers, director, cinematographers come together to communicate a single story using their different expertise. Thomas Sowell rightly says, it takes a considerable amount of knowledge to realize the extent of your ignorance. And what better way to beat that by listening to as many people as you can. The more diverse the group, the more the perspectives and scenarios you understand for critical thinking. Vision, the most important. But this is beyond the vision statements we put onto walls or onto websites. Here I'm talking in, in the sense of a direction to navigate through, individually and collectively. Simon Sinek rightly says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That's the favorite part. An ideal collaborative environment is where everyone has a reason to work together. There's some sort of excitement to work together. This is where people are honest about what is working and what is failing. Basically a congenial environment, which helps you to adapt, iterate, and make something magical together. This is the most painful, but my favorite, documentation. Especially for complex problems where you know you're not gonna arrive at a solution really fast, it's extremely important to keep the process in mind. Documenting impacts is what we call it, instead of saying we've hit a bump. Because with each collaborative project, there's an underlying promise of experimentation and exploring. The India Craft project is shaped by this flexible structure called SALT. The India Craft project is a platform that I'm driving for the community that explores and in uh, artistic realms in the traditional spaces of India. We've tried to do a lot of meetups to meet different kinds of people from, to get different perspectives on what the problem may be and how to solve it creatively. We've met a bunch of travelers, designers, dancers, musicians, even bikers, to understand how would they relate to a cluster like this or not relate at all, and where we can bridge the gap because there's always some connection. What we've realized for sure is that there is a definite need at this point to keep a consistently higher learning curve, to equip our craftspeople with immense creative exposure while you strengthen them as a professional to cater to a wider audience themselves as a stakeholder. And social media has been a beautiful tool to reach out, share the vision, and invite people in different capacities. Now let's look at Stanford study, if not the India Craft Project so much. It was seen that those primed to act collaboratively stuck at their task 64% longer than their solitary peers. Their engagement levels were higher, success rate was higher, and fatigue levels were lower. And this persisted. It showed that mainly feeling a part of a team makes you motivated enough to take on challenges, but with a purpose. A purpose that requires different thinking minds the different thinking minds that have the humility to see a situation in its truest form and the audacity to imagine it as it could be. And for that, we must remind ourselves that this needs patience, grit, and a collaboration. 
a collaboration of hustlers, be them engineers, designers, doctors, activists, with a vision. Let me take you back for a minute to October 1957. Sputnik had just been launched, and there are a bunch of 20-something researchers sitting at Aplar over lunch discussing the satellite. One of them said, why not tune into the satellite and see what happens? The other one who had the skill set got an amplifier set in his, then antenna and amplifier set in his office, and a couple of hours later, they managed to tune into this satellite. Another one suggested, why not get a big analog tape recorder, record these little beeps, and read the data? Another one read the data, ran some numbers, and a few hours and specialists later, they had managed to map the entire trajectory of this satellite around the Earth. Just going off on a little side hunch they had over lunch. Matt, Frank McClure came in, their boss. They said, guys, can you invert this process maybe? You know, I'm building, I'm building this uh, submarine in Pacific Ocean. It's really hard to know if your missile is going to land on top of Moscow without knowing where your submarine is in the middle of Pacific Ocean. So they, they thought of throwing a bunch of satellites and maybe tracking the submarine fathoms deep in the Pacific Ocean, basically inverting the whole process. And that's how GPS was born. And 30 years later, Ronald Reagan opened it up to the public to build upon. This little application that we have resting on our devices today has had quite a collaborative journey. And I'm pretty sure, I guarantee, more than half of us has, have used it to see where we're going to go next, right? Collaboration is, as a tool, is extremely underrated. I believe it's a currency, people's currency. If used effectively, it's the kind that untaps the think tank along with the skill tank. Seth Gordon says, we have to acknowledge that we have finite time, finite resources, and finite connections. How do we indulge in them prudently so that the outcomes make us proud eventually? I want this opportunity and use it to remind us that together we can achieve more. So put yourselves in the spot. Care to share your vision. Who knows who might hop on with their own hunch? It'll take us from being a wandering generality to being a meaningful specific. From an idea that we can hold in our fist to something of value that we can all hold together, closer to being solved. And anything new that doesn't conform to an existing template is a work of creativity. And that never truly is an individual process. And the myth of the lone genius is exactly what it is. Amit, thank you.